Hi there, my name is Yolanda from Yoyo's Career Channel. Today, I'm going to talk about interviews for promotion, whether you are going through that internal process with your current company or applying for a higher level position elsewhere. You will need some kind of strategies to position yourself for greater success. If you haven't gotten an interview but just started to apply for a promotion or you are thinking of amending your CV for promotion, then the strategies I share here should also help you. Broadly, my tips on interview for promotion are about convincing the employers why you are the right person for this job. And on the other, on the other hand, it's about convincing yourself that you are ready for a promotion. 50% of people, even after getting the promotion and the new job, they think they are fake or ill-qualified for the new job. This is called imposter syndrome and it can also provide, prevent you from even getting the job you deserve. Now, before I start the tutorial, please do make sure you watch this from beginning to end. I have a habit of starting with the easiest and most common topics um, because it's easier to digest and then I'll dive into the most important points later in my video. First half, about convincing the employer why you are ready for the promotion. It is important that you position yourself to be already doing the bigger job or at least part of it. The trick is to think about what you have been doing alongside your job that are not yet an official part of your current job. These are usually projects that are more strategic in nature and allows you to learn about the big picture. So in the interview, you may not actually showcase the projects that you did, but the insights, the learnings from such projects, they can be great talking points and prove that you do have that understanding, hence positioning yourself for a promotion. Some of the examples that could be, um, one is strategic reviews. So some of the initiatives that you can come across could be uh, researching and analyzing the landscape of your business in the past and future, the danger, threats and opportunities, and then coming up with the actionable points for the organization. It is the best if such strategic projects can cover a bigger scope than your current job. Say, um, if your job only covers Southeast Asia and then the initiative is about Asia Pacific. That's something that sort of brings you um, perspective of one level up. The second one is process re-engineering. So such work can be great because it is time to reflect on how we are doing things, how we can do better. So part of our work as we become more senior is to keep a keen eye on processes and whichever functions we are in. Generally, such projects can also help you to build a cross-functional network within your company and facilitate a very good understanding of the business. The next is change management. So change management is a very, very critical aspect of leadership because changes are constant and then we humans, we have a natural tendency to resist changes. Um, therefore, change management is not only a technical or business matter, but a psychological matter. It's the most challenging even for seasoned leaders where failures often prevail. But this is where you will be able to shine if you are already a leader on the ground in some of the teams and it can show your influencing power and leadership, your EQ, your interpersonal skills, your deep understanding of the company's culture and subculture. And on that, you don't even have to be the leader of the change management as long as you participated in it. The other example is about incubation of new project. This is often required at a leadership level. So if you have already done such work, you can approach it with a few aspects, your courage and your capability to build something from scratch, your resourcefulness of getting things done um, by pulling things together, organizing in a big organization. The next one is an example would be team building. So if you have hired a peer or sometimes even a senior, um, or you have mentored a colleague who's at a lower or sort of even a peer level to you, then this kind of experience you should mention because it's not only about leadership, but it it certainly prepares you to excel to the next level because it gives you a better reflection and understanding of your current work. 
So these are the some of the examples. And uh, I want to add one thing is if it's an internal opportunity, you would have done a lot of work before you can even get such an interview. Uh, you would have gotten your hard work noticed by the senior management and also your uh, supervisor. Um, one thing to note is that you wouldn't want to sound like you feel unrecognized, especially when you are listing all those things, right? So if you are presenting to a committee who would make the final decision, um, then it's the best you get support from your manager beforehand, have some alignment, and you, will, you need to sound very well supported in that interview process. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are already a subscriber, please do give the video a like. It means a lot to me to continue with this channel. About convincing yourself why you are ready for that promotion. This is actually much harder than convincing the employer, even because even after getting the job, right, we still feel we are fake from time to time and worry that we will be revealed and poked through and exposed found out that we are actually not good. So I have met many high achievers who are extremely successful, but they still believe they are complete fakes. This is called imposter syndrome. Um, that is actually very common with women or with people who grew up in a very strict family where we believe that we have to be overachievers, but we still feel insecure even after growing up. So to overcome these imposter syndrome, we first have to understand what's going on through our minds. What are the assumptions that we actually are having? Number one, everyone else is qualified for their jobs. Interestingly, um, here's a thought experiment. If we assume workplace promotions are generally efficient, means if whoever is 100% for his current job, he will be promoted to that next role. Then this keeps going on till he is no longer 100% good for his current job and he will be stuck there forever. So in the workplace 100% efficient, you will see it's, it's going to be full of people who are not 100% good for their current job because if, if they are, they would have been promoted already. And if the workplace is not that efficient, then that means sometimes people will be promoted when they are not even 100% qualified for their current job. Then either way, right, we are going to be working along with people who are not fully qualified for their job. Assumption number two, I am a fake and even if I manage to fool others, I will be exposed one day. Um, actually, most of the time, we can't really fool others. Uh, we, we can to some extent. That's why we are all imposters to some extent too. But most, more often, it's likely you can't fool yourself or you can't meet your own standard. So it's important that we start to be able to evaluate ourselves objectively and so that we assess the source of such judgments. Uh, usually a career coach or counselors can help you with this. Uh, a mentor or even a good friend can help you to put things into perspective so that you are not sort of fooled by your own brain. Um, in some of my coaching sessions, when clients have similar problem, um, it could also be because they have experienced some of the setback in career, like retrenchment or people just passed some irresponsible comments like, hey, I don't think you'll ever make it. So uh, in such cases, I helped my clients um, to, to, I asked them that, you know, do you think that this is, do you realize that this is actually just an opinion expressed by someone else? It is not necessarily an opinion that you have to buy in with. So gradually they start to learn to sort of separate that from their own opinion and understand which are the part of that statement they want to take back as a learning and which other part of that statement that still hurts but they don't agree with to, to leave that behind them so that they can move forward and reconcile with the kind of hurtful feelings as well that come from that experience. So the takeaway here is if you do have an imposter syndrome and think you are fake, you are not qualified to get a promotion, do take a very objective assessment. Is it because of who you are and you are used to thinking things this way or is it that you are able to validate things a little bit better with other people's help?